Sometimes computering is hard. A while back, I put out a cranky rant about a Western digital NOS that really turned out to be one of the worst purchases I think I've ever made in my history of buying technology products. At that time, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I had terabytes of data stored on this device, which was crashing on the regular. I kind of left that video a bit open-ended. What I ended up doing was buying a newer empty Western Digital just because it was the only solution I had access to where I could get the information back off of those drives. And this little Western Digital unit has actually been performing a bit better. But over the last couple months, I've started rolling some firmware updates where the newer, better, faster, stronger Western Digital NAS had started to encounter some of the same failures which were warning signs on my older Western Digital NAS. Things like firmware updates that finish on the device and then it gets stuck in the reboot cycle and it never really comes back until you power it off and power it back on again. There are few things more worrisome than going to the box what holds all of your family memories and all of your work project files and seeing that it's unresponsive because it can't reboot from a firmware update. At the same time, kind of hilariously, my uncle was also looking at some kind of big storage backup solution and got himself this Western Digital, uh, which is a USB connected. This is not a NAS, this connects to a computer, but it's a two drive solution. And he also ran into some very frustrating problems using this enclosure. Two 10 terabyte drives plugged in the USB cable, started running a backup, and about an hour later saw that he was getting thermal warnings, temperature warnings on these drives. He sent it over to me, I plugged it into my PC, started transferring over some of my video project files from past reviews, and same thing. The tiny little fan that's only in the top of this casing, not really sufficient to really move all of the heat out of two big storage dense drives working in tandem. Just really drove home for me how much I like Western Digital drives, the actual drives that go into their products, and how I'm just a lot less impressed with their enclosures for those drives. I'm running a huge spinning disk black drive in my current PC build. It's been awesome. The actual drives themselves that are in this NAS, they've been terrific. They've run for a really long time with no faults, no errors, no crashing. This video has been a long while in the making because I wanted to have a proper update for you fine folks. And these types of solutions and upgrades, they get pricey. I finally saved up enough, not just to get a new enclosure, but also a storage upgrade. I was starting to max out what I had in this box, so I needed more, and I opted for a QNAP, running three big drives in RAID 5. I know that there are different permutations of RAID and some might be safer and more protected than others, but for a smaller home office media workspace, this looked like the right solution for me. And I'm also gonna buffer it with an SSD just for some faster caching because I do work directly off of my network attached storage. Finally got it all set up, got the drives installed, upgraded the RAM, threw in that SSD. So I'll report back in a little while once I've had a bit more experience with this new QNAP. But now I'm sort of stuck. Like I've got Western digital enclosures that I'm not super impressed by. I've got a NAS with older drives that have been run for a while. So I, I wanna open this up for some discussion for you folks in the comments. What do you do with big old storage? What do you do with an enclosure that you're not using anymore? Drop me some comments. Let's have a conversation. There's got to be something fun I could do with this. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, for subscribing to this channel. I'll have an update on that new QNAP, probably do a full review on that once I've really put some use into that and really kind of driven it a little bit harder than just setting it up. So that should also make for another fun part of this conversation. If you would like to help support that longer term conversation on tech products, how they actually fit into our lives, there are links down below this video in the description, or you could consider consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen. It's a fun, growing community of like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me when I'm making future videos and reviews and editorials. So I hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Twitch. And I will catch you all on the next video. If I don't lose all of my storage.